Hello folks, this is Jamil Swift for Gunstar Reviews. We're here in Phoenix, Arizona, the world headquarters from Enlo Custom Guns with Marty. How you doing, buddy? Good. So today, we're finally getting to the end of the pocket-friendly... Pocket-friendly 1911, yeah. 1911 project for now, okay? <laughs> because you know that a 1911 is never finished. Um, we decided at the end not to do the front cock insurations and the top strap. Mm -hmm. But that can always be done later. Yeah, it can. And you can refinish the slide and redo everything, mm -hmm. you know, without a problem. Okay, the, let's remind our viewers what we did. And the concept behind this job was to do it instead of, we we're still paying the same amount of money, mm -hmm. but you, you didn't do it at one big chunk at the beginning and spent $2,000 mm -hmm. on a custom job. We did it. In um, like every other week. Yeah, know. I mean, I took it. It took a year, but I it mean, took a year. Know, <laughs> you had to make up your mind a few times, but yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, we change yeah. our minds, mm -hmm. and it's like, hey, I have, you know. Well, that's kind of the point, though. Is that okay? Well, we change our minds on things, and we didn't attack it all at once, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, if someone has the idea that okay, well, hey, I want you to do stippling on it this week. Okay, we do it, and then you come back. A year from now, however long it takes, you know, it doesn't really matter. But I mean, that was the idea is that, okay, it's a little friendlier on your pocket than that, that big chunk right up front. Yeah. And that gives you the opportunity to change your mind. Yeah. And so. we changed our minds a couple of times <laughs> in the parts we used. Mm -hmm. First things we did was the Smith and Alexander Magwell mm -hmm. and the Smith and Alexander uh, Beaver Tail. Mm -hmm. Rip safety, yeah. That was the, the most, I guess, comprehensive thing you had to do because you had to cut the frame mm -hmm. for the um, for the for the tail. for the beaver tail yeah we had we had to uh we had to really just kind of file on it uh you know there, there was a little machining involved uh at least uh there, there can be with some of the smith and alexander stuff but uh you know as far as uh that that's just the the most amount of labor that's going into a lot of it um you know and i, I think we stippled it as well around the same time so we stippled the front we, we stippled the back strap we stippled the front strap and then you know, we, we raised we raised the, the 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 undercut here around the trigger guard, and that's just that cosmetically, as far as the exterior of the gun goes, there's a ton there just that you're taking off the finish and filing on, and then sanding and making it look good. Mm -hmm. But I mean, getting the lines blended and all that, I mean, it, you know, that that's one of the big reasons why if you were to re-blue this gun every time, you know, let's say we fitted the grip safety and then we decided later on, which I think you did, you said, okay, let's do the undercut now. Well, when we did the undercut, you know, if it would have been re-blued, you would have paid for it twice, right? Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, as far as, far as that went, uh, I believe we did the, I do believe we did the magwell and the and the grip safety. And then and we did then the, tr the trigger. Uh, uh, the fire the, control, yep. Fire control completely, yep. for complete fire control, Yep. And, which is, uh, Sa uh, all everything, all the guts on the inside, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and the um, safety, and then uh, and the trigger, trigger, yep, and the safety, all mm -hmm. Harrison custom parts mm -hmm. from Harrison uh, design, which are really really good parts. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, we did, did we do the sights next? Yeah, uh, we did the sights. Yeah, I, I believe so. And we yeah. use Harrison sights mm -hmm. for the rear, and we used a, a Glock a, front sight. A yeah. Glock front sight, and the this front sight is from Warren. Uh, Warren uh, mm -hmm. sights that are really good sights. He makes sights for pretty much every gun out there, mm -hmm. but his Glock sights are not only incredibly strong, they're machined from bar stock, mm -hmm. they're not casting or anything like right, that, right. and they, their dimensions are really, really good. And Scott is a great guy, so mm -hmm. I'm gonna give props to Scott Warren for doing a really good product. And then we did the slide stop and the Mac catch. Mm -hmm. Which was the you know basically um, you know I use Harrison design mm -hmm. Mac catch and um, and you did some fitting in those two parts right. to you know to make it easy to install sure uh, we also fitted uh, we fitted uh, two Wilson Combat extractors the, that's right yeah right? we fitted two extractors yeah. and uh, so with that there uh, we we went through and we polished some of the other internal parts like. Uh, uh, polish the chamber, uh, polish the breech face, uh, mm -hmm. polish the inside of the slide. Uh, you know, just uh, elimination of sharp edges, tool marks, that type of stuff. Uh, you know, what I, what, I, what I would throw in is a basic reliability package. And you put in a, also a Wilson Combat ejector on it. Yes, yeah. So yeah. that's another thing, an extended mm -hmm. ejector. So getting some of the high-end Wilson parts, mm -hmm. like the bulletproof parts, mm -hmm. I mean, I was being 
overly cautious with this one because I don't think a Wilson Combat bulletproof extractor is going to break. No. <laughs> I mean, but I... Well, they, I mean, they, they can break, but I mean, uh, you know, they, they're they are actually fairly good and they have a great record. And I mean, they, they you know, at least they're they're made from tool steel. And, and I mean, that's, that, that's the, those are some of the factors you look at and you go, oh, okay, well, there's a reason why we use them. Yeah. Right? And not to say that the Springfield extractors are bad, they actually work pretty well. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with them. They, yeah. they got the real good material. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to change them, we put two Wilsons mm -hmm. um, and fitted but, them. So right. in case we, one breaks, mm -hmm. boom, the only thing you have to do is take the broken part out and put it in, mm -hmm. send the broken part right. out to Wilson, and they'll send you a new one. Right. And I, I will state that uh, because we fitted the, the ejector and the extractor, uh, you know, uh, you know, Springfield makes a good gun, but uh, they they don't go through and do little nuanced things like cleaning up the edges every once in a while. Like they they don't they're close, but they don't uh, they don't file fit uh, the frame to the slide no, type of thing. No, because this and, is a production pistol. Well, this it is. is, and but uh, now that that's been done, that's what I did as well. So we we actually uh, we actually file fit and and blended these perfectly so that. When the barrel locks up, the, there's there's no seam here, mm -hmm. uh, and that was another thing. It was a nice little feature that came with our with our Smith and Alexander safety as well, because now this whole back end is seamless, and you know, like I say, that's something you don't necessarily get from from most factory guns, right? But uh, you know, and, and you know, I don't I, I won't badmouth Springfield because I own a, I own a few of them, and I I like them as a good base pistol, and that's exactly what this gun started out as, and now it's been a, a tuned up tuned up carry pistol. And, and interesting today. <clears throat> Just today, I'm reading the comments by viewers, hmm. and somebody said, hey, where can I send this gun to get made tighter? <laughs> and I'm, well, what do you mean by tighter? Mm -hmm. And he just wanted a reliability package okay, yeah. on it. And I said, well, we're just finishing off our, our thing today. He doesn't want to go all the way custom, mm -hmm. but he wants like a reliability package sure. on his mil spec 1911 sure yeah. so that's like well you know mm -hmm. this is the guy that you send it to and he'll do that for you so there you go then um at the end when we had all those parts done mm -hmm. that's when we did the stippling front the and back yeah. and you went ahead and you did something for this gun that i really like there's nothing wrong with the smith and alexander magwell mm -hmm. but it's square yeah pretty much so i had you file back the tail end the heel mm -hmm of the gun and then give me the two cutouts. Have you noticed the 1911 si grips have this little bevel on the bottom? Mm -hmm. So you put the same bevel that is on the grips but on the magwell. Right. And this is something I saw several years ago and it was, hey, I like that mm -hmm. and I had it done since and Wilson Combat will sell you a magwell. Right. That is machine from Barstock, bulletproof. And it's beveled. To, and it's beveled right. with the same exact bevels. Mm -hmm. But this one will cost you a hundred bucks. Now the Wilson one will cost you like two hundred. Mm. So yeah, it's a big difference mm -hmm. in price. And then last things last, you uh, we test fired it a mm -hmm. couple of times mm -hmm. to make sure that everything was honky dory. Right. And the last thing you did was blew it. Yeah, we blew it. Uh, we we brought it to Gratis Precision and had them uh, had them blew it and uh, did an excellent job. And then I threw in some grips with a gun sight chicken on it because mm -hmm. we need to have the chicken on it everywhere. So it's done, right? For the time being. Mm -hmm. So pretty soon, you know, we'll decide if we're going to do the front cock considerations. Even though, you know, what's interesting? I don't use the front cock considerations to cock the pistol, right? Okay, but I like what they, what you know, how they look. They they, they look good. I they, mm -hmm. you know, I, I put I I put lots of front cock considerations on th on things and. Um, you know, I, I think it balances out the gun really good. I know, depending on who who does your training, like in gun sight, will will tell you only grab at the back serrations. And mm -hmm. I mean, I I know there I know there's different uh, I know there's different modes out there. I know that uh, especially for women, some people like to put them on the on the front because they get to do more of a push pull action with it. Um, and uh, you know, I I like putting them on guns, but at the same time, it's not the end of the world for me. No, so. and it's and it's not that again, it's not that we use them mm -hmm. is that we like what they look like, okay? And it's, to me, it's a cosmetic. It's like the um, stippling on the top. Mm -hmm. The stippling on the front and the back has a purpose mm -hmm. for grippiness and for, it right. helps you get a more positive grip. A lot of people usually say, well, I cut the glare down on the top. Mm -hmm. 
It might, but yeah. I don't think that's why most people do it. Most people do it because it looks nice. Right. I'm not to say that you couldn't get some additional grip here. Is it really doing anything for you? A little bit, but I, I mean, you know, yes, it is more of a looks thing. I, I mean, does it, when you look at it and you see that, okay, yes, there is a glare difference, but I don't know how much I see a, a shiny top of a, a slide when I'm out in the sunlight shooting versus I'm front sight focused, but, uh, you know, it, it, I, it just depends. I've never it, seen glare from mm -hmm. the top of the slide. And, and I know a lot of, a bunch of other people, um, want uh, rear sights with a little mm -hmm. ledge that you, they can actually yeah. rack their slides there. Well, this one will allow you that. Well, but I, I will point out there, there is one thing, there is one thing I'll, I'll point out about uh, stippling over, over certain things like uh, checkering is a great example. Checkering is by far the most beautiful thing you can do to a 1911, right? It, mm -hmm. I know when the peaks all look great, and you know, versus stippling, stippling, stippling is a little bit uglier, but you know what? There, there's beautiful stippling jobs as well. Key difference. If I go, if I'm carrying a gun, especially a 1911, that thing hits, bumps, runs into everything, right? If I do that to stippling, it looks normal. If I do that to checkering, all the peaks are gone and your the beauty of your gun <laughs> goes with it, right? Yeah, I've seen so, way too many 1911s with stip with uh, checkering mm -hmm. that, you know. Well, well I just, it, it, it it shows wear a lot quicker versus stippling. It's like uh, stippling, uh, it just looks like par for the course. Yeah. Right? But uh, no, uh, I, I appreciate stippling, but uh, I also will do checkering as well. And uh, I probably, uh, I, at least the way this piece turned out, uh, I, I'm really glad how it turned out. I really think he's going to love it. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're going to go ahead and take it out and shoot it. Uh, take it to a range. Mm -hmm. Just shoot it one last time. And then this belongs to our friend Mark. Mm -hmm. So... You know, he'll be happy, it's taken a year, mm -hmm. but sometimes, you know, all good things to all those who wait, you right. know? So, thanks Marty, mm -hmm. appreciate it. And then again, guys, stay tuned for more on this project and many other projects to come. And like always, please remain healthy, stay safe, and definitely have fun at the range. Thank you for watching Gunstock Reviews. Please visit our website at www.gunstockreviews.com for more exclusive content please visit our Patreon page at www.patreon.com slash gunstockreviews. Your contributions would be greatly appreciated and help us grow our selections and frequency of videos.